a major part of um, Google. Google internet marketing. Content marketing is one of those examples. Content marketing is blogging, it's events, it's email marketing, it's writing content and putting information onto blogs. SEO is an element of internet marketing. Search engine optimization. It's getting you found on Google. You hear a lot of people throwing this term SEO around a lot. The SEO is not actually the umbrella term internet marketing is, as you can see from this diagram. So SEO is just one of those functions of Google. Email marketing is another one. Things like MailChimp, marketing using those platforms. Um, and that's another example of content marketing. PPC, pay per click marketing. This is paying Google and paying Facebook um, where you pay per click. So PPC, pay per click. Um, it is good. It's very good with Facebook. Uh, Google AdWords is very good, but you have to spend quite a lot of money. You are competing for certain keywords. It comes under SEO quite well um, because you are competing for keywords and allows you to have keywords that you can optimize for. And then finally, we've got social media. Social media marketing, major area in internet marketing nowadays. You've got Facebook marketing, Twitter, LinkedIn, all these platforms support what you do in SEO. Now we're focusing on SEO for this webinar. And I just wanted to understand a little bit more about what SEO is. So SEO and phrases like keywords, optimization, uh, optimizers, pay per click comes under that. There's quite a lot with SEO. With SEO, we're optimizing for search engines. People search now using search engines, but I don't think many people use anything other than Google. They particularly use Google. Others exist. We've got Bing, Yahoo, AOL, Ask Jeeves, AltaVista, all the web. Blimey, but most of us use Google. About 80% of people search using Google. A lot of Microsoft computers default to Bing, though, so that is worth bearing in mind. So the SEO that we do is optimized specifically for Google, but the same theory applies to Yahoo, Bing, and all the other ones if you do use different search engines. So the top eight, Google, uh, right at the top, and you've got Yahoo, Bing, AOL. If anyone uses any of the others? Probably not. Just a note then, as I refer to things, I'm going to talk, I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to talk about search engine optimization and search engine marketing. So you've got search engine marketing is the pay per click, so AdWords, and search engine optimi optimization. Um, so we're going to talk about SEO and search engine marketing, SEM. So just going to jump over to Google. And if we're using Google, I type in, I don't know, cinema. And feel free to do this while I'm talking to you and, and have a go. Um, we want to see what comes up when we type it in. I'm located in rugby at the moment. So this optimization is searching for cinemas that are close to me in rugby. It knows where I am because of my internet connection. I could search on my phone and it knows where I am because my phone's always putting out the, its location. And that's based on location. I just search using one word. So it's using ones that are close to me. I know my nearest one is Cineworld because it's come up in the map. This is search engine optimization working. Other cinemas are ranked in location. So you could optimize for location. You could get people to find you by location. We could search for other things, more precisely restaurants, if I spell it correctly. If uh, restaurants near me. Again, this is using the location. Now, there's a lot more restaurants to choose from than the cinemas. So here, I know the Cafe Oco is in Rugby, Prezio, uh, Benigal Cuisine, it seems to be over here, um, just on the outskirts of town. And I know that it's looking for restaurants near me. Then we've got websites that have got a better SEO than others. So we can hear we've got TripAdvisor, very good, big company, Square Meal, uh, Rugby Mitchell Restaurants, and we've got Prezio, which is that one there. So these people have optimised for the optimization using their search engine optimization. 
So this is an example of what we mean by SEO. These are all free of charge organic listings, whereas these, can you see the ad, are paid listings. So that's pay per click listings. So these have got the ad. Quite often you'll see them on the top. We haven't got any examples in this one. Um, or down the side. They're getting less and less on the side now because um, they, they don't optimize for Google, uh, for mobile, sorry. So you tend to see them here and you see them up. They got clever because they used to be yellow. But now you've got the ad next to it with it in green. So it looks remarkably similar to the free one. This is a free one. This is a paid one. These people will be paying. Um, so the duck on the pond at Long Itchington will be paying to get those keywords optimized. So they'll be paying for, um, this is paying for the phrase restaurants near me. And they're paying for people who search within a certain location. So I've searched that and I'm based within rugby. So it's searching for a certain radius near Long Itchington. And they can be paying anything from £1 to £25 per keyword. They're probably paying around £3.50. So if I clicked on that, they'll get charged. Now, some people think, well, if I did an advert and somebody kept clicking on my advert, I would end up being charged to a point. If I keep clicking on that, so I click on it, go back, click on it, up to about three or four times, it will disappear because it knows the IP address that it's searching from. So I won't be able to see that after I've clicked on it two or three times. So yes, I'll be charged a little bit, but you can't have it happening loads so you run out of money. Um, people set a limit on how much they want to spend. But anyway, that's pay-per-click and it's an element of SEO. We are interested in free organic SEO for our WordPress websites. So our website wants to appear in here and we want to see how it looks and how it appears. So for example, search myself. I'm searching for myself using my own company name. Using my company name, um, I've searched for it in here and it comes up. I would expect every single one of you can search for your company name and your website will come up. I'd like to think. If it doesn't, we need to have a conversation as to why um, it's coming up and it's not appearing for your own name. I don't want to optimize for my own name because if they know my name, they can go straight to my website. But I want to optimize for, let's say, social media training uh, courses at school. I want to optimize for those courses. So it looks like where am I appearing? Not that high. Now you've got all these adverts coming up here and you've got other people appearing higher. These people have optimized better than I have. I'm not saying I'm perfect. We've got advert, 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 advert. Interestingly, this person here appears as an advert and as a free one. That's interesting. So think about the phrases that you want to get found for. Jumping back to my PowerPoint. This is what we're referring to. So we're going to think about what people type in. So you get indexed within Google. As you saw, you've got the sub pages that index within, within Google. So what you've got is your index when people find your pages. You find those pages and it sub finds those pages. So by optimizing within Google, Jumping around. These pages um, can be optimized. Things that affect your factors within Google, you've got your search question. Google's really clever in that if you type in certain things into, into Google, it will come up. So, for example, pizza. Typing in pizza, it will come up with a recipe, or as we saw, we typed in restaurants and it came up with what goes in in your restaurant and the local restaurants, and it actually knows based on the question. You might type in 30 second timer, and within that, you type in the 30 second timer and it automatically comes up with a 30 second timer. Um, you can type in Oceanic Airways Flight 22, as you can see on the bottom right of the slide, and it can tell you where in the world that flight is. So that's really, really good, and it works out based on the question that you're typing in. The other one, as you just saw from my searching, um, was location. So I just typed in based on location, and you could see the location of where we're searching from, and I typed in pizza based on location. So it's really, really heavily based on location. 
we want to think about in our searching and our optimization getting found based on location so we want to look at keywords this is really really important i want you to look at the keywords that you want to get found for i've got an example here calgary um different keywords and how many times people searches for this town i think it's in canada um searching for this town we want to get found for these locations and we want to create a niche market the more precise we are with our key keywords the better we're going to be within a low competition area so if you offer a service or product that's a very high competition area you need to really bring down those keywords to optimize them and get found in google those of you who've got google analytics this is very helpful we do Google Analytics um, over our next month, so this, this follows on quite nicely. So for your Google Analytics, it tells you a list of keywords that people type in to find your website. It's always worth getting an idea of what people are typing in and what they're finding you for. So the kind of keywords that people are using for your business. I want you to write down, jot down 20 key phrases that somebody would use to find your website. What words are they looking for? Your service plus your location, a niche service. So, for example, I've got social media training courses, social media courses in Warwickshire, social media courses in Leicestershire, social media courses in Northamptonshire. They are all phases, and I will list all those phases. On top of that, we've got internet marketing support. Now, in my case, internet marketing could also be called digital marketing or a lot of people use the phrase SEO to cover internet marketing. So I know, because of my industry, what phrases people use. You will know what words people are typing in. You also want to use your Google Analytics just to see what they actually are typing in. So providing people are typing these in, you've already got a website, see what they're typing in. So you can look at what they're typing in and particularly important, what they're spelling wrong. If you've got a name or a website or a business that's got an odd spelling, mine, for example, people type in online dash, uh, on, on dash line toolbox. And I think, why have you put a dash in the middle of online? But they do. Sometimes they separate it to on space line space tool space box. That's four words. They break it into four words. I don't mind how they spell it because I will optimize my site to ensure that they're going to find it. So I need to think about those keywords. I'm going to jump over to WordPress before I'm onto that next section. So I've got WordPress open here. And you should be able to recognize this dashboard if you've got a WordPress website. If you haven't, some of this theory does work with things like Drupal or Joomla. Um, but I will assure you the way it looks is totally different. I know a few of my clients are online and you've all got WordPress websites that we've made. And you can see that oh, it's jumping up. You can see that it looks similar. So we'll just struggle with this screen. What on the left hand side is you need a platform called SEO. SEO, it's called Yoast SEO. It's a free plugin. Um, it's really easy to install. Um, all of our websites have got it already installed. If you haven't, really easy. You go to plugins when it loads. And you go to add new. So you add in a plugin. And you can add the plugin in, uh, typing in, uh, sorry, add new, typing in Yoast SEO. Now it's Yoast, not how I spelt it. Yoast as in toast. So Yoast as in toast um, with a Y. Um, Yoast SEO, you can see it on the screen there, Yoast SEO. I've already got it installed, so it's just asking to do an update. If you haven't got it, you'll install, and then just make sure you go to Installed Plugins, and you find Yoast and you activate. You see it says Activate underneath it. Mine's already activated. That's all you need to do if you haven't got it already. If you haven't got it, a lot of things here might look a little bit different. I'm focusing only on the SEO. So this is the software that we need to use free of charge works and allows you to optimize for google so generally you don't actually need this seo section 
what we're interested in is optimizing every single page, product, or post. If you have e-commerce or WooCommerce installed on your web uh, your website, you can optimize every single product, which is excellent. If you have um, any blog articles or blog posts, you can optimize every single blog post, and it's really really easy to do. So I'm going to go over to the page, and let me do home page. Going over to my home page, I have my Yoast SEO at the top. So that's slightly different because it is at the top. Most people will find it at the bottom. You scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find Yoast SEO at the bottom. It depends on the template that your website's using. Our most recent website builds uh, will have it at the top. This is just one of the upgrades with WordPress. Slightly older sites, if we've made your web website more than about six months ago, it'll be at the bottom. No different, it's just where they've put it in the new upgrade with WordPress. Not a major issue at all. Yoast SEO is brilliant because what it does is it ranks you on a trick system. So this page here, green. So up here, I've got this green, and I've got a green icon here, and a green icon here, and a green SEO good, readability. So this is where we start thinking about our keywords that I've just been talking about. Here, it gives you a snippet of what this page will look like in Google. So I've edited my snippet and I've told Google that I want to be online toolbox, internet marketing, social media training, and web design. The URL, which is the website address, doesn't normally change. That obviously, your domain is not gonna change. That's the website address that you've got for your home page. Now, that's called the permalink. Can you see here, permalink? So you've got that, and that is what comes up in Google. Underneath, you've then got a snippet, and you can edit snippet. And that is where you can put in the text. It's really, really good because if I put too much text in, it goes red and says, no, no, you can't have that much text. Because what happens is it just cuts off. So you type along, and it's updating just above how it will appear in Google. I highly recommend in that description there, you put in as much descriptive text as you can do and location but don't list don't list a load of things i've been a little bit naughty and put powerful internet marketing awesome web design and responsive training but then i've put a sentence to make your online marketing stand out from the crowd in rugby warwickshire so i've put a little list in with a little description then do a focus keyword so the focus keyword for the moment for this page and i can change this every month is social media training we want to get found for that. It then gives you an analysis. And this will drive you insane. You will get really, really obsessed with wanting this to appear green. I know we do. This is not a perfect one, I have to say, because we've got some reds. Not good. So this relates to the rest of your website, the rest of that page. I'm just going to open up the front of our website so you can see what it's talking about. So this one here, your focus keyword doesn't appear in the first paragraph of the copy. So it's saying that I haven't said the word social media training in the first paragraph of my copy. I have, can you see I've said it here, but I think it's not finding that because of the way that's been split. So that's worth bearing in mind, it's not perfect. What I should do is I should reiterate it and put it somewhere like here. I should call this one here, social media training. Really simple. And that would then tick that box. So it's not perfect. Meta description doesn't contain the first keyword, focus keyword. That's this one here. Can you see it's this meta description? So I need to put that in. It's really simple to do. We've still got to finish this and it's not perfect. Uh, keyword density is 0.3. Keyword density is really, really important. If you use this keyword, social media training, social media training, social media training, over and over and over again, you will actually get yourself into trouble with Google and potentially can get yourself chucked off Google. But then on the other side, we don't want to go too low. This is too low. I haven't used this word enough. So it's saying it's 0.3. 2% is about what you should do. You don't want to use this word too much. So I just need to mention that word a few more times in the copy of this page, inside this copy. This is where social media, uh, search engine optimization copywriting comes in. 
So this is where this comes in and you can then use it and optimize it through. On the upside though, we've got an okay, we've got a medium. This is called an alt attribute. I'm gonna come back onto that in a minute if that's okay. And I'll show you what that means. That's referring to the images. And then we have some green ones here. This is good, this means we're good. The text contains 603 words. So that's more than equal to the recommended minimum of 300 words. Every single page on your website should be a minimum of 300 words. The page title is a nice length, it's good quality. Um, you've never used this before. If you try and optimize every single page of your website for the same word, you will actually lose marks in your ranking system. Um, it says the focus keyword appears in the subheading, which is good, but it says while not a major ranking factor, it's beneficial. This is brilliant because it just talks you through SEO. It's so simple. You don't need any knowledge of SEO. Um, no file links or outbound links. These are linking. You know when you can do linking and you link back and you link to a website and you forward and backwards. That's actually not a good thing for Google anymore. People used to say, I'll link to your website if you link to mine. And yeah, it's not actually considered helpful anymore. Nothing wrong with having some normal outbound links, which is what they say here. So don't intentionally doing your linking is what I'll say. You will naturally link anyway. Um, and then you've done a message description, which is this. The most important thing you can do every single page is this, your snippet. And you can edit snippet underneath and then close snippet. Making sure you've then got a keyword for every page. So let's go over to a page that has poor SEO or hasn't been done. We've been working through ours. And we've got, can you see here, we've got different rankings here. We've got readability and we've got SEO. So what it's doing is we've optimized our home page. But let's say we wanted to optimize, I don't know, one of our ebook shop, because we want more people to buy our ebooks. So this is an ebook page. The one here, this hasn't been done. We've been working on this job to do. So by default, it's decided to say this is what it's all about. So it's pulled the text from our page. And this page in real terms is this one. In real terms, this is our page. So this is what you're seeing. This text here is this text here. It's automatically pulled that text across. So we want to edit that snippet. I want it to be a bit more optimized for people who are typing in books about internet marketing or books about MailChimp or Google Analytics so I can sell some more books online. So I could put eBooks, can you see it's typing there, about MailChimp, Google Analytics, and social media marketing, spelling marketing correctly. That's just fitted. If I try to fit more, I'm gonna get into trouble. Can you see? It goes dot, 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 and it turns into orange. So I want just enough there, so you can see. This one here, this is the web address, and that equates this one here. So I might want to optimize that permalink so it is a bit clearer. So I might call it internet marketing books and that's called the address there you see it changed there this one here changed here so people might type in these marketing books and i want to be able to sell them to them so i think that's going to be our main focus for this page so i'm going to copy the slug yes it is actually called a slug it's just the end bit and i'm going to make that the main keyword taking out the the lines as you can see in there here I've got my meta description. It's very helpful. We have a selection of guides to help you get to grips with online marketing. Purchase a book and it will be available as an ebook download. That's not really optimized though. It does tell you what it is when you go through Google, but we need to optimize that a bit better. So I think we want to put downloadable, because people might be looking for downloadable, books about internet marketing and social media well, i think we need a bit of email marketing in there as well 
uh, on platforms such as MailChimp, Twitter, oh, I'm going orange now, spell Twitter correctly, and Facebook. Oh, perfect, we're hitting the target. And we've probably got a little bit of room to put another one in there. Go for Google Analytics. So we can put those in there, and people might be typing in downloadable books about internet marketing, social media. Um, some of the books are free. I could put downloadable free books, but they're not all free. So that might be lying. I won't get into trouble, but it's probably not good etiquette. But I've now got a, I've got a listing here that's a lot more optimised than previous listings. So people might be typing in downloadable books about internet marketing. They might type in downloadable books about email marketing or social media. And Google will say, ah, that's got that bit of the phrase and then that bit of the phrase. And oh, MailChimp book or Twitter book or Google Analytics book. So it's pulling out those bits of phrases and saying, well, this page is relevant to what you typed in. So I'm getting more optimised. So now I've got here the focus keyword. So using this here, we want to get more greens than orange and red. So we've got a bit of work to do still. So we need to make sure that internet marketing can add in into here. Oh, now we've gone over. So I want to be sure that internet marketing has been put into their internet marketing books. So I probably want to remove take out MailChimp maybe, ebooks about Google Analytics, social media, still can't fit it in. So we can tidy that up without it going over too much. Social media, internet marketing books, doesn't quite make any sense. But here now I've got my, my tick. And you work your way through changing each one, changing each term. Interesting, I've got not used this keyword. So now I want to be looking at editing what's inside my page. So actually, I want to detect here to make sure this includes the word internet marketing. So in this case, I've got um, called a Divi Builder. A couple of you may have a Divi Builder. Other you, others will be slightly different, so you'll edit the text differently. However you edit your text, you will just need to edit the text, and it will look similar to this. I think... Purchased an internet marketing book and it will be available as an ebook download. There we sneakily include that in there. So I should be able to tick that box. So it's about going through ticking each box. I do need to include it a little bit more. And what you can do sometimes this doesn't update straight away. If you can update, run the update, um, and then it sometimes updates it as well. Don't, get, don't worry if you don't get too many greens. It's not the end of the world. The fact that you've done this is more important. But as with anything on um, WordPress, you can update. Oh, look, we've just changed to good. We've now got the green light. So we've got a green here and a green here. And if I go back to all pages, I can see. That my ebook shop is now green and green. I've got a green screen for readability. That's part of an accessibility app that I've got uh, to make sure my website is accessible, which gets you points with Google. And I've got a green for my SEO. What you can see is I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to do every single one of these pages. This is a fairly new website, and we're only just getting around to sorting it, so we've been doing the most important pages. So I'll show you what we've been doing is the key pages that we've been optimising. So we've got a couple in here. We've been optimising based on individuals and people. We've got here optimising certain pages. But every single one we made sure is accessible and readable first before we started access, um, um, optimising, apart from this last one. So we've gone through and we edit every single page. As you saw the PowerPoint, the reason behind this. So we've optimised for these keywords that help us to get found in Google. So the reasoning behind that, people choose those words. You've now got that 20 keywords that you've found. You're going to make sure those 20 keywords have been 
put into each page, every single page, to make sure it's optimised. Every single post as well can be optimised. So we've got our latest post here. You can optimise every single post and make sure that those posts appear in Google as well. It has, this one's the same. So this one's at the bottom, similar to what you find on most of your websites. You just scroll down. If it's not open, press on Yoast SEO and you'll see the little drop down here. Click on it. It's not that it's not working, it's just hidden in there. Again, exactly the same. We can optimise. This one here is a blog article on Facebook 360. So we'd want to talk about how to use Facebook 360 and optimise that um, to make sure it matches. Some of our blogs um, are at least 300 words because then that helps and gives you a green light immediately with optimization on Google. And those of you who've got products on your website, products can all be optimised as well. This is how it looks. So every single product can be optimised. And again, down here, this, this is an example. This one's closed. I can then optimise that product to get that found in Google as well. You'll be thinking, oh my goodness, how much work? Yes, unfortunately. But once it's done, it's done. And if you add a new product to a new page, that's when you can optimise it. But you save yourself an absolute fortune doing this rather than getting a company to do this for you. There is no technical ability required here at all. It is all basic editing of this. No HTML coding required. I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint because I want to show you about those alt images I was talking about. A couple of more things as well as keywords that are important towards search engine optimization. And one of those is called the title tag. Now, the title tag um, helps Google to understand what is the most important thing in your website. What is the structure of your website? So where does that structure stand? And I'll show you what I mean by title tag. So in here, I'm going to, I'm going to go to a blog post. It's a bit better than a product. So for example, I've got an article here. The most important bit of text for this is the title. It is the main title. What we've then got is we've got sub headings and sub options and these are called our headings this is our title and this is our headings now i can tell google and tell the optimization the most important thing and it knows is this title then it's heading two then it might be heading three you might get one then it's heading four so you're saying that you're going to found, find me for any keyword or any phrase on my whole entire page, it's going to be this first, followed by this, followed by this. So of those 20 keywords that you've chosen, you're going to put the most important one here. So that's what we mean by the title tag. So here is what we mean by the title tag. The meta description, you've already seen that one. That's the uh, grey text we were putting in into the Google description in the snippet and displays in the title. So that one you're going to do for every single page anyway. Now, meta keywords. I've talked about keywords. I've been talking about keywords, uh, the focus keyword. I've been talking about keywords in your content. I have not been talking about meta keywords. Back when I started doing internet marketing, we used to cram lots of keywords into the uh, HTML code to make sure we got found does not carry any major weight now with search engines. You do not need to do any of it. So if people say, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll cram all the keywords in or we'll fit them all in, it's a good way to get yourself into trouble. But think about those 20 keywords and think about a focus keyword and using that keyword throughout. So that's what we mean by those. And if you're thinking clever, you think, oh, I'm going to list all my keywords and then we're going to turn the text white so it's the same color as the background. Yeah, that will get you into trouble as well. And that's called a black hat technique. And I'll come on to that in a minute. And then an alt tag. It mentioned on that page that was orange, an alt tag. Alt tags are for images. So what we have, and I'm going into my media in WordPress. Yeah, I'm happy to leave the page. Is we can add in every single image and we give it alt information. So let's say I've added this image in. I can add it in now, I give this information, or I can do it when I upload it. 
you can go back through to every single image that's installed, every single PDF, every single document, and you can update the alt. So here, this is not a very good optimized image. I can optimize this image. We want to do this to get us found in Google Images. Google Images, as it stands at the moment, it cannot read what an image is. It doesn't know. They are building a technology, and I have watched a TED talk that shows you that Google's starting to be able to recognize. But what it's not really knowing the difference is, um, it doesn't really know the difference between a cat that's happy or a cat that's sad or a cat that's scratching or a cat that's doing anything, for example. Yet we have an idea that that cat looks quite stressed or that cat looks quite content. So it's not quite to that point. So they haven't actually launched it because it's ability to identify. There's a really good TED talk on that. It's on my blog. I'll share it with you. And that shows you how it's working. But at the moment, we have to tell Google what this is. And we don't have to be too truthful. We don't be too dishonest. I should get yourself into trouble. So this is a photo taken with the panoramic option on a camera, which allows Facebook 360 to work. In my case, it relates to an article that talks about Facebook 360. So I'm going to call this Facebook 360 degrees photo. I'm not lying. That's what I'm saying it is. And I'm giving it a title. By default, this will be things like image number 10, 20, 34, XYZ dot JPEG. And that's not very optimized for Google. Underneath, I can have a caption. Now, I don't particularly want a caption. I'll show you what a caption would look like. A caption will appear on the front of your image on your website. So it would appear just as if here. So I'd end it with a caption. So you could say, photo of, it will appear underneath here. And that's OK if you want to do that. I generally don't use that. And it has absolutely no search engine optimization benefit at all. So don't bother with the caption if you don't want to. I'm very interested in the alt text. And that's what we're coming on to. This tells Google what the image is. And also, it's called the alternative text. So if the image doesn't load, that text will appear in the image's place. It's also good for accessibility and screen readers, so people with um, limited uh, visual impairments have screen readers that read out what's on the page. So without alt text, again, the computer doesn't know what the image is of. So all you need to do is copy the title and put it in the alt text, and that will help you get found. This one's a lot more detailed. You could call this details about what the page is. This is not seen by anything other than the search engine. So you could put all sorts in here. Don't put anything inaccurate, but you could put all sorts in here on linking back to your blog. So I'm going to call it Facebook 360 for your small business to help promote your social media marketing. So if anybody wants to learn a little bit, they might come across this image. This will help Google to understand what the page is about. And I can go through and I can edit every single page on my website. Literally, by going through the media, I can go through every single one of these and I can edit it, making it a better, more optimized one image for Google. And this is saving as you go along as well. So that's what we mean by the alt text. So I've gone into media and I've chosen my image and I can optimize these images to help them get found on Google. So I've already done this one. This one here, everyday cybercrime and what you can do about it. I've then put the alt text in and I've put a description and I've put a TED talk. And that is a um, cool. It's available on our website. The image is on our website, and I'm telling Google what that image is of. You go through and do your media library. Now, if you thought doing the SEO for your pages was a big job, wait till you see your media library job, because there's usually three or four images per page, and every single one of them needs doing. It is a massive job, but when you've done it, it's worth doing. What you want to get in the habit of doing is when you add an image to your blog or to your page, so you upload any image, you want to make a good habit of clicking on the image when it loads, choosing the image, and doing it here. The chance to optimize it here, as we just saw on the previous one. So you've got the chance to do that there. So when you do it, save it into there, putting it into the title tag, the alt tag, and the description. And then you can insert that into the post just like you did before. And, that in. and that means the alt tag has been optimized as well. So you can 
add that onto there. Okay, so that is optimizing our alt tags. So we've looked at keywords, we've looked at alt tags. Now, a couple of things I want to cover, and I've mentioned a couple of the first ones. Um, so they do not put text, white text on a white background or black text on a black background, because these are bad practice and black hat techniques. I doubt you use this very often. Flash and Shockwave, one of the big reasons Flash is hardly seen before or Shockwave anymore is because Google doesn't like it. Google doesn't see it very often and the spiders on Google robots do not pick it up. Image only websites, um, not good either. So if you're only relying on your titles and your alts, that's not good either because you need to have some text to include the keywords into. Um, image maps, generally, this is too much of a focus on image. Don't do that either. JavaScript and HTML errors, don't worry about that one because your web designer should not have produced your website with those errors in. But misspellings, that's one, particularly if you're spelling things wrong. Um, maybe to be clever or just generally you've got spelling mistakes on your website. Google actually doesn't like it and it will actually rank you lower. It's just a simple thing that you shouldn't be doing. Also, PDF files. Please don't put too many PDFs. A, Google cannot read PDF files. PDFs will not get you found on Google at all. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a PDF file in addition to your normal text. We have them. We have the, every single one of our course has a PDF file you can download. But on that page, we have all the text images from the PDF file on that page. So the only reason there's a PDF file is so it's printable. So don't put PDFs. And if you want to, you need to place them at the bottom of your website. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So one of our training pages we have our PDFs for each one and they're pretty well hidden through so the actual pages first let's go to blogging uh, you can read all about blogging same text is inside the PDF but then all the way down here download a printable course information pack and that is a PDF which you can print about blogging but all that text It can't read that PDF, so don't rely on PDFs to try and get you found. Black hat techniques, hidden content, hiding the text are in there. That is considered a black hat technique. Keyword stuffing. So you saw that it wanted 3% of that word to be used 3% on the page. If you go above that, 5, 6, 7, 10%, and you use that keyword over and over again, you actually considered keyword stuffing and you will get yourself. Well, you won't get yourself into trouble. You'll just get your website removed from Google, and that's the last thing you want to do. If you do get it removed from Google, you can get it put back on, but you have to adhere to all their policies and tick all their boxes and clean your website up beforehand. So please don't get to a point where you've gone and stuck hundreds of the same phrases. Nothing to panic about. Nothing to panic about because you can't accidentally do it. If you accidentally do it, that's not stuffing. It's when you sit there and just paste that word in over and over again. People talk about doorway, gateway pages. Um, these are landing pages, which you've probably heard of. You know when they sort of lock you in and you can't go back and you can't go home? They're really annoying. They're designed for search engines, not the end user. So they're fake pages that are stuffed with information. And you can't move. They're really annoying to the person. And actually, Google hates them as well. Link farming is when you have loads of links back and forth. A lot of people say, I'll do a link to your website if you do one to mine. That's banned as well. That changed in the Penguin update a few years ago where loads of people were doing it. I still see SEO companies in certain countries, China and India, sending me emails saying, I will get you 100 links. Don't even go near that. It's actually a black hat technique and against policy. White hat techniques, good things that you can do. Quality content. So information that's useful. If you naturally write on your content, this will happen anyway. The quality content, quality information that you can share. Uh, this one underneath, a bit of a technical one. Um, if you've not had your website done professionally, um, bear in mind that if you're trying to code and put in your website and all your, your layouts, it actually doesn't like everything being inside one file. You haven't got an issue if you've used WordPress or Wix or Weebly. So it's probably not something for you to worry about. Again, using titles and metadata, as we saw, putting in a meta description and putting in a title. Researching your keywords and using your keywords effectively. That's good as well. And quality inbound. This is inbound. This is a link going to your website, not out of your website, going into your website. This is links from 
Facebook, links from Twitter, links from email marketing, links from other people's websites, being on a, a directory listing, not too many of them, but things like yellowpages.com or linking to your website from Facebook. I always talk about this and quality inbound links are natural. Nothing wrong with that as well. So I talked a little bit about search engine optimization um, and this sort of covers search engine marketing. We've touched on pay-per-click marketing and we've looked at the technicals behind using the SEO and the SEO tools. There's loads more that you can do to optimize your uh, pages. You can go through all these snippets, go through all your focus keywords. You can submit a site map through Search Console, but we're getting quite technical. And finally, you can look at your Google Analytics and work out the keywords that you use and are used to find your website. So that's really, really important that you use that. Our next webinar is on Google Analytics. So lovely timing. And we're going to talk about how to understand your Google Analytics reports. This will be nicely onto your Google Analytics. I'm going to unmute you so you can ask any questions. Um, hopefully, that's quite a bit of information for you to cover. Um, and you've got enough there. I haven't had any questions come through the chat, so I'm hoping that it's because everybody understands what's going on. Um, but also, if you don't feel comfortable uh, asking your questions on the webinar, please feel free to email me. Um, I've seen certain people who are along. I know most of you. I've met you. Um, I'm going to go with the unmute. Has anybody got any questions? Emily? Yes. Just one question, how do you know how many keywords you can put in in sentences before it doesn't like it, if you know what I mean? Okay, so this, um, you can see on the on the analysis, I've not got the best, best page to show you, um, it tells you, uh, let's go to the home page, um, it says you have got too many, so underneath here, keyword density. I've not actually got enough. The second I go over, it says it's too high. Okay. So it's really, really helpful. That's three percent. Yes, yeah, so you can't get into trouble basically as long as you keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on that. It will go red and it will say your keyword density is too high. Yeah. It fine. was found twenty-five times or something. So that's good as well. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No problem. I know it's scary talking into the group. Um, they're all nice people. <laughs> oh, I've got one on the chat without asking a question. Um, okay. How do I get my key phrase to sound natural when I'm writing a post? Aha, right. My key phrase might be photographer Warwickshire. Good question. Clever question. So, what you do is you, you really naturally write. It's so hard to do, I can assure you. Um, I employ someone to do this for me because um, you have to naturally write. So write your article as you normally would and then go back through it and you could say something like, when I was taking photographs in Rugby Warwickshire or when I was taking a photograph in Kenworth Warwickshire, you naturally change the words. It is going to look slightly odd, but it won't look too odd. Things like, I am a photographer in Warwickshire. Um, I also take photos in Warwickshire. You end up sounding like a broken record. But then also, don't be too much as you end up going over that density. Um, you also just look a bit silly sometimes as well. So if you keep it natural, then you'll get the keyword density to a point where it's okay. Um, and don't worry too much about trying to cram it in there because you might get into trouble with the keyword stuffing. And that's where exactly as we saw, this bit here can get over, over to the point. Does that answer your question? <coughs> Any other questions? You can put them in. Hi, Emily. Hello. Hi. Um, we don't have a WordPress website. We used to yeah. have a HTML. Okay. Is there any way, um, instead of using the percentage for the density of the keyword, is there an amount of keywords that should be in a sentence, like a count, a word count, or a word count for the minimum of 300 words for each page? Yeah, so 300 words um, minimum for every single page. So obviously you can yep. copy so that. So it should be words. Words. And then no more than 3% of your words should be 
the key word, if that makes sense. So around 10 of the 300. Yeah, not many at all. That's about the percentage, okay. yeah. I'd okay. work on that one. There are some checkers, and I haven't used them for years, um, where you check the density of your web page. Um, I'm going to literally Google it while we're on the thing, because I remember using it years ago. Keyword density checker. And your page through, and it tells you the percentage certain keywords that one oh, all right, that's really useful so you drop in the website address and then it reports back and tells you um and you're looking for something you could use and okay Anybody else got any other questions? Okay, not sure if I've lost a certain people. I think a few have dropped off. Um, no problem if you want to email me any questions. Um, emily.k at online toolbox.co.uk or you can just reply to the event bike booking or anything like that thank you ever so much for joining us and um, we will be looking at doing the next one